Hello and welcome to this video. So today I want to look at some of the considerations for preparing your images for print on demand. So if you don't know what print on demand is, print on demand is if you want to make a book of your images and you send it to a printing company that may print on demand. So typically they will use these types of toner based printers, which is this dry ink, which is burnt onto the paper. Uh, to to print the images. So there are some considerations within that. For instance, the color space is much smaller for these types of printers. Uh, so we need to prepare images in a particular way to do that. Now, one thing that you should check before you get into this is, is you should check with the printer that you're going to use. So the printing company, ask them or check their website on how the image should be prepared. So you need to find out the type of profile that's best to use and also the type of paper that you, they have available. So they may have coated and uncoated papers and images may need different profiles based on that. But we're just gonna take a look at one particular image. What are the considerations behind it if we're preparing it for a print on demand project. So for in this case, we're going to be importing it into InDesign uh, uh, and what are the effects on the image when, when, when you're preparing it and some of the uh, kind of negotiations you have to make with getting the image ready for that. So here we have this image here and I picked this image especially because it is a little bit of a difficult image, I think, for print on demand. It's got quite a strong tonal range graduating in the sky from this light blue at the top to these orange hues at the bottom. Uh, also, the contrast is, is, will, will prove difficult for the print on demand process. So it will depend on the printer that the company uh, is, is using. Uh, different companies will have different types of printers. Generally speaking, there are these toner based ones. There are a few wet ink print on demand processes around, but they are normally not that common. Uh, so yeah, so let's have a look. So we're going to start with our raw file. So I'm going to double click and open this in Adobe Camera Raw. And this image has been edited already. So I've, I've edited this image to give it an optimal look. I'm, I haven't been thinking about sending this image for print on demand when I was editing it. I just wanted to get the colors nice and the tone nice and so on. Uh, so that was my idea when I was editing this image, but I'm going to take it into Photoshop now and I'm going to edit it for print on demand. So we can see here at the bottom, first of all, the settings that I'm going to use when I bring the image into Photoshop. So the image has been cropped because this image was captured on a Sony A7 or Mark II. So it was much bigger, but it has been cropped. So if we look at the crop area, so we've cropped a little bit out of the out of the right and the bottom of the image. And I've changed some of the exposure settings and the dehaze and clarity and so on. So so what I want to do is, is just go through the few steps that we need to do to prepare it for for print on demand. So I'm just going to click on open and that will open it in Photoshop. Okay, so some of the principal things I need to do is because I specified in Adobe Camera Raw that this will have a, the Adobe RGB profile attached to it, that's a large color space and it's a color space, this color space and Profoto are two color spaces that are recommended for when you're editing pictures. So if I was to edit this image further, I would want to use uh, the, the, I want to use it with this color space of the Adobe 1998 RGB profile or Profoto. But for this case, I'm just going to stick with the Adobe RGB uh, profile, Profoto being a much larger color space. So what we have here is, uh, our image, we have a few, uh, small little dust spots, which I've, I've spotted since I opened. So what I normally do just to, to get rid of them is, is I create a new blank layer. I go to my healing brush, my spot healing. 
make sure that I have sample all layers checked because I'm doing this on a blank layer. Content aware is checked, that's fine. And I can increase or decrease my brush size using the square bracket keys and just spot out this mark. And I can check for any others. I don't see any others. If you want, you can zoom in. Control the spots will show when you get to get it printed, even though they're not so obvious when I'm looking at it on the screen. It is also recommended to have your screen calibrated. So if you want to calibrate your screen, you would need an additional piece of hardware to, to calibrate it. And so that would mean making sure the colors and the tones are correct. So your image is being displayed correctly on your screen. If you don't have access to a device like that, that can be expensive. You can also use a histogram and that's why I recommend using histograms to figure out if your image has been exposed well or not. So here we have a histogram for this image. What does the tonal data mean? So here on the left hand side, we have our shadows represented. The, the, uh, the height that these peaks go tell us that there is a lot of that particular tone. So if we want to get it more because at the moment it doesn't really tell us, it doesn't give us a guide where the tones are. So if I go to image adjustments levels, I can get some idea here at least of my kind of tonal range, where my blacks are and so on. So you can see here blacks and dark tones on the left, lights and whites on the right, and the mid-tones in the center. So the first thing to notice is that print on demand the types of printers that can be used, they, they won't have the same tonal range as your inkjet printers. So inkjet printers normally have an expanded color range in that they have additional inks apart from the four basic inks, which would normally be cyan, magenta, yellow, and K, which is our CMYK, K being black. Print on demand printers will only have the basic four inks and will not have the same tonal range. So that is one thing that you, you need to be careful with. And it, it may be possible if you check with your printing company to get test prints. So if you have any prints that you feel might be problematic, it is always a good idea to check and get them test printed first. But let's have a look now at preparing this. So first of all, I'm just going to combine this layer that we had with the layer below. And one of the first things I'm going to do is first of all, mode so at the moment, this was in, I imported this in 8-bit mode. If I was going to do a lot of editing to this, I would have imported it at 16-bit uh, because that allows us to retain a lot more, a lot more tonal information and color information. But 8-bit is fine because I'm going to be changing the color profile for this. So what we need to do is, is first of all, we we can do a preview. So we can, if under our view menu, we can get this thing called proof setup. So we can do a proof setup with the working CMYK. Now what's the working CMYK? So that's our CMYK profile. So, so many print on demand companies may ask you to convert your images to CMYK. Some may not. Some may tell you it's fine to send a file in RGB mode using the sRGB profile. It is normally not a good idea to send them with, to send them for print on demand with the Adobe RGB 1998 profile because the color spaces are quite vast between the color differences would be quite vast between sRGB and Adobe RGB 1998 and Adobe RGB 1998 and CMYK. So it is not recommended to do that, but we can get a preview of what these colors look like with our working CMYK profile. Now what's our working CMYK profile? You can find that in the edit and then go to preferences and or sorry, not edit preferences, we, we find it in, in our color settings, of course. So underneath our working spaces. So you can see here at the moment, this is a new version of uh, Photoshop that I recently installed and it's actually changed it back because normally I don't have this. Normally I set, because I'm based in Europe, I will have coded Fogre 39, which is what we use here in Europe. In the US, they will either use this US web coded uh, swap or uncoded, depending on the type of paper you're going to. But again, this is something that you should check with your with your printing company. 
So you may also need for uncoated papers, you may need to choose this uncoated Fugger 29. But again, this is something your printing company will tell you. For the moment, we're going for coated Fugger 39 as our working space. Normally, I like to have my working space here on Adobe RGB for these. So I'm just going to set that while I'm here too and click on OK. So, so that's where it takes when I go to view and it talks about working CMYK profile. That's where it takes it from. So we can prove proof these colors by clicking on proof colors or using the keyboard shortcut control and Y. So we didn't see too much of a difference here in this image. There was a slight darkening of the tones, the orange tones here. So if I do control Y and turn it on and off, you may be able to see it on the screen. So our tonal graduation is getting affected. And that's normally where we see that, that, that change happening is in these tonal graduations. So I do some work for a company that does print on demand here in, in Helsinki. And when people bring our files, 99% of files are fine. Everyday pictures, normal tonal ranges are fine, but quite sometimes we get images, uh, we print dummy books for artists and they sometimes have images where the, 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 they can be challenging photographs. So those types of images need some preparation. Uh, otherwise, when you get the prints back, get your prints back, you will be disappointed uh, in what you end up getting. So what I always recommend is going in and first of all, proofing the colors and you can edit it while you're proofing the color. So what you can do here is, is, is that you can have this in 16 bit mode. You can have it, uh, in with your Adobe RGB profile still active and you can do this proof colors and do your edit. So for instance, if I wasn't happy with this sky, for instance, I feel it's losing a little bit of saturation. I could come in here and create a vibrance adjustment layer and maybe change my, my colors a little bit. And now I'm getting my proof colors. Okay. And then when I, it's ready, I go merge down to merge it into my layer. I'm still in proof mode. So I go to my proof colors. So now if I was preparing this image, First of all, I would size the image. So I want to size the image for the size that it will be on the page. So if I'm printing a book and it's A4 landscape book, that's going to be 21 by 29.7. So for instance, I may want this image to be a full page image. So in order to prepare it, what you need to do is, is it needs to be, first of all, 21 plus three on millimeters on each side because you need some bleed. You need this bleed space when you're preparing images for a book that are going to be full page size. Because when the printing company is cutting it, the cutting machines aren't accurate or they have at least a threshold of about three millimeters. So you always ha should have the image that you're going to be sending as a full page image to your InDesign file it should be three millimeters bigger on each side than the page. So for instance, I can go to my image uh, or what we'll use here is actually the crop tool because this one is would be more useful. I can put my size in here. So the width, so A4 width is 29.7. So I want to choose 30, 30.3 centimeters. So that gives me three millimeters on either side, on the left and right. Uh, it's just giving me an error message here because I should have used a comma for my decimal place uh, and not a full stop because that's the standard here in Finland and then 21.6 so now I'm just it's you can see it's cropping it a little bit further so I'm gonna I'm losing a little bit of the left and right so I'm gonna move the crop to about to about here And also I'm just going to, for this, I'm going to pixels per inch. Standard print resolution is normally about 300. So I'm going to enter 300 here for that. And I'm going to hit the tick mark. So now I have my image cropped and ready 
for the size of the page. So the next thing I want to do is, is convert the profile. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to my edit menu and I'm going to go to convert profile. Don't use assigned profile. So use convert profile because that will use Adobe's engine to convert the colors. And I can see CMYK is already checked here. So sometimes you come in here, it might be checked on RGB by default, but CMYK is checked. And you can see that little color shift happening when, as I'm going from my RGB to CMYK, you can see that little color shift here. And then I'm going to click on OK to do that conversion. So now my image is with a CMYK profile, as you can see above here. So the next thing then we need to check is our, our total ink. So our total ink is how much ink that each portion of the image is going to lay down on the paper. So we can check that if we go to our info tab and we have a little eyedropper up here and we can click on that and we get a little flyer menu and we can move down the total link. So what we want to do is, is we want to check our total link to make sure that this value is not too high. So this is in a percentage value. So where we generally want to check is our, our shadow areas, the darker areas, because some printers will have limitations to the amount of ink they can lay down. So if you think about the total ink, it's the total amount of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black that's going to be put onto the paper. Some printers will have an upper limit set at about 280 to 300 percent. So you should again check with your printer and ask them, is there a total ink limit? What will happen if there is? You may end up getting very, your darkest shadow areas may end up being, being very, very dark. Uh, and then you get the even darker areas end up being lighter. So you get these really poor looking shadows and you get, it just doesn't look good. Uh, if, if, if you have the total ink area that's too high. So you, so you may need to also adjust that. And I believe I have another video, which I will put a link at to below on how to adjust total ink values. If your total ink values are too high. So you can go ahead and take a look at that. So, so we checked our total ink value here. Uh, we can just see it by moving our mouse over and we see in the top right hand corner, our total ink value here, it's going to excess. In some areas it's up to 311%, which may be too high. Uh, for instance, the printers that I have experience with, uh, the normal upper range of those is about 300% for total ink. But again, you need to check with your printing company. So then I'm going to save this file. So I go file and I go save as, and I save it and the file then will be ready to import into InDesign. And when I import it to InDesign, the profile that you use with the file, which in this case we're using CMYK, a CMYK uh, Fogger 39 profile, which is a European standard, that profile will be attached to the image when you bring it into InDesign. So when you output your InDesign file, to a PDF file for printing, those profiles are attached with it. And that's why it's very important to prepare your images properly in Photoshop before exporting them into InDesign when you're making your book. So I hope this video was helpful. If you like the content, please subscribe and give the video a like. Thank you for watching.